In today's episode, I take a look at setups on Pound Aussie Dollar and Euro CAD. Bruce takes a look at setups on New Zealand Dollar JPY and New Zealand Dollar CAD. Karabu takes a look at the Dollar Index and Euro USD. And we announce our fourth Trading View Trade of the Week winner. Enjoy. Welcome, guys, to another weekly episode here with the FX uh, Price Action team. Uh, we've got some great setups for you guys. Uh, just a quick reminder that we are running the Trading View uh, Trade of the Week competition. Uh, we are announcing our fourth winner in this episode, and then this week we will find our fifth winner, and then uh, you guys can vote uh, for the best uh, for the best setup, uh, and that setup will ultimately walk away with uh, a TradingView premium sponsored account. So if you are interested, uh, you can just post your setups on either our Facebook page or in our Discord room, and then also post your after photo, of course using TradingView and the hashtag hashtag after, so we can we can find it. Uh, but yeah, without any further ado, let's uh, jump into the setups. All right, uh, looking at pound Aussie dollar, uh, we're on the weekly chart here. And uh, what we can note here is uh, after this market had this big impulsive move, we now have quite a complex correction forming over here. Now, once this correction is finished, I believe we're going to go lower and eventually perhaps get to these lows uh, down here. But ultimately, this price action is still a bit bullish, and I believe we still have uh, a little bit of a move higher before we're going to come down. And we're just going to jump down to the smaller time frames. Now, uh, jumping down to the daily time frame, uh, we see we had this uh, impulsive move, we had the consolidation, and we had another impulsive move, and then this consolidation. However, this market is busy forming a, a bit of a reversal up here, and the most likely scenario for me is a bit of an expanding flat uh, to take this liquidity and fill this void down here into this order block here. Uh, so hopefully, once we get to these lows here, we'll find a, a move higher. Alternatively, if uh, we don't get the move down and we, and we end up going higher, uh, once we get to this uh, eight hour order block uh, that I'll show you guys uh, in a second, uh, then I look for the shorts. Uh, but the most likely scenario for me is uh, this move uh, to the downside before going higher. Uh, now this eight hour order, order block that I marked off, you have to scroll uh, back a bit, uh, if I just scroll back, uh, is this uh, little resistance point, this last move up before the market came crashing down. Hopefully we can still get up there before we find the reversal. Uh, but for now I'm going to be concentrating on finding the short uh, down to this level over here. All right, so moving down to the one hour time frame, uh, here we had the little uh, move up and then this big consolidation, which en ended up being a little bit of a head and shoulders, uh, this flag pattern before it broke out. Now, hopefully next week we will find a corrective price action to this level. And once we get here, uh, we are look to get short this market. Now, uh, we also have to just watch the price action. If perhaps we go below this low and we start consolidating and have an impulsive move up, then perhaps it's best to stay away because then we're most likely to make new highs. But again, the scenario that I'm looking for now is, is hopefully some corrective price action back into this uh, little uh, flip zone area, and then uh, we can find a short uh, to that liquidity point. Uh, so quite a nice big trade, and one we'll be watching out for in the trading room. All right, and then finally, just a little trade here on the EuroCAD that I'm going to look out for early next week. Uh, we had this, uh, it's quite a big uh, consolidation uh, down here, uh, and I'm not really sure if the price is going down or up uh, ultimately. Uh, but what I can see is this market had uh, this impulsive move, uh, the correction and another impulsive move into this liquidity and then the big reaction. Uh, so it left uh, all these uh, clean lows down here and I think the market is at least going to get to these lows. Uh, so hopefully next week what we're going to be looking for is a move uh, back up to this little order block uh, which will also be this uh, pivot block and this liquidity point over here. So ideally what we're going to be looking for next week is a little bit again uh, corrective price action what we're looking for uh, to take this liquidity into this order block and right here hopefully we'll be able to get short at least for a move uh, down to this uh, liquidity point over here. Uh, from there, like I said, I don't know if it's going lower or if, if this is going to be uh, the move higher, uh, but I do think uh, this uh, it's quite high probability to at least get to these lows and perhaps eventually into this uh, little order block down here. Right, yeah, those are my two trades for the week, uh, and I'll see you all in the trading room. Good day, guys. Okay, I have NZDJPY, a buy scenario that I have today, so I'll just have to explain how I saw that buy. Uh, first of all, this is my trend line that I just spotted. So this is my trend line, which is gonna tell us that if we break going up, we're gonna have a nice a nice confirmation that yes, we are going up. If price can break this going up, we're gonna have a nice confirmation that of course we are going up. But you should know that uh, I'm still using the old rules. If after every after every breakout, price should at least retest 61.8 of FIBO before it goes before it goes up or, or down. So let me let me quickly add my Fibonacci. So if you add your Fibonacci from the nearest low to the high, which is this level here. 
So what we'll, what we'll see, we'll see that uh, we have 61.8 between 50 and 61.8. Every, every retracement should at least retrace between 50 and 61.8. Another thing that I see is that price might still do this, might still go down there to trap the, the sellers before it pushes up, right? And then from there, if price pushes up down to this level here, so we have a great buy opportunity here, right? With confluence with what? With the trend line that we have, we have here. So what, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at a long-term scenario all the way up to this level, or even this one here, right? So if price is going all the way up to this level, it won't just run from here all the way up to that level there. So we have a breakout here. So once we got this breakout, we'll expect price to pull back to this level around 61.8, 50 and 61.8 before it pushes all the way up to that level. So for me, if we can quickly jump to NZDK. For me, looking at this level here, this will confirm that uh, NZDJPY is going up. So look at this movement going up, this impulse going up and the consolidation and then another movement going up there. So looking at this level here, we have a nice breakout here, which is which gave us an impulse going down, right? If we have A, B, and then C, and then D, why did I put D there? Because of this level here. So we might look at the second exit here when we sell it going down to this level right okay another thing to add is that once price price did the impulse impulse going down and then it went up down failing to break this low so it might push inside 61.8 before it pushes all the way down there yes we sell it here which risk and reward will be very small you can hide your stop loss there you sell it here you hide your stop loss there and then between somewhere here it's gonna be your your exit then you look for buy opportunities here, right? For a long term, a long term buy based on higher time frame. Thank you very much, guys. We'll talk again next time. Good day, traders. I wanted to do an analysis on the Euro USD for this week's weekly market analysis. Now, before going to the Euro USD, I wanted to do a quick breakdown on the dollar index on the daily time frame. Now, what we had previously was this supply zone and the below price, we currently have this demand zone. So what we had was price dropping away from the supply zone and it came back a few days later, came for a retest and it dropped away. And what we are currently seeing now it is a second pullback into this supply zone. So for now, we can assume the price will break this supply zone so what we could potentially see it is for price dropping all the way to this demand zone at 96 where we could now see some potential reversals this is going to correlate with the euro usd now similar structure in the opposite direction on the euro usd this is this demand zone of which on the dollar index we are reacting to a supply zone this is more clearer on h4 h4 is going to be our entry time frame so this is our supply zone our demand zone sorry supply zone it is currently about so what we would expect it is for price to rally all the way to this in a supply zone and I am looking for this to be removed, considering that on the daily, there is enough curve for price to rally a little bit higher. So if I switch to the daily time frame, we have the supply zone above, which is similar to the demand zone on the dollar index. So we could see price rallying all the way to that supply zone before continuing to the downside. So this is the scenario I'm looking at on the dollar, on the Euro USD. I hope that you find this video useful in your analysis and good luck for the week. Cheers.